Hi, I'm Emma. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to hear more about my chaotic journey through love, betrayal, and self-discovery. Now, let me take you back to the days leading up to what was supposed to be the happiest day of my life, but turned into a storm of drama and revelations. In the sunlit living room of our soon-to-be shared home, Jack and I were poring over seating charts and menu options, the usual pre-wedding chaos. He looked up from a list of guest names, flashing that charming smile that first caught my eye. Hey, how about we put your Uncle Joe next to my college friends? They love a good story, and Joe's got plenty. Laughing, I leaned over the table, playfully snatching the seating chart from him. Only if you want the police called to our wedding. You know how rowdy they can get. Our laughter filled the room, a perfect moment of bliss. But as all things too good to last, our doorbell rang, slicing through the laughter like a sharp knife. I wasn't expecting anyone, so the sudden intrusion left a strange anxiety bubbling in my chest. I opened the door to find Lucy, my estranged sister, standing there with a tight smile. The air between us was thick with unspoken words from years of silence. Lucy, what are you doing here? I managed, my voice steady despite the surprise. I thought it's about time I meet the man stealing you away forever. Her words were light, but her eyes didn't match the humor. After a hesitant moment, I led her into the living room. The introduction was stiff. Jack extended a hand, which Lucy shook with a little too much force. It's great to finally meet you, Lucy. Emma has told me so much about you. Has she now? Lucy replied, eyeing me sidelong. Well, I'm sure there are stories from our high school days that might have been conveniently left out. The air shifted charged with a tension that made me want to disappear. Jack laughed, oblivious to the shift. High school, huh? Must have been wild times. Lucy's gaze locked onto Jack with an intensity that made my heart sink. Oh, we had our moments. In fact, Jack and I had more than just moments. We dated, remember? How could you forget our junior year together? The room suddenly felt too small, and Jack's face drained of color. He stammered, his usual confidence wavering. That was a long time ago, Lucy. I'm with Emma now. That's all that matters. Lucy laughed, a harsh sound that made my skin crawl. Just making sure my little sister knows all about her perfect fiancé's history. I felt a pang in my chest, the pain of old wounds and the sting of new ones mixing into a bitter cocktail. Why are you really here, Lucy? This isn't just about reminiscing. She stepped closer, her voice dropping to a whisper meant only for me. I just wanted to see if he'd tell you the truth. People don't change, Emma. Watch your back. With that, she walked out, leaving a silence that roared louder than words. Jack reached for my hand, but I pulled away, my mind racing. Emma, I... Don't... I cut him off, needing space to think. We'll talk about this later. As Jack left the room, his shoulders slumped. I stood alone, the weight of Lucy's words pressing down on me. Had I been naive... Was Lucy plotting something more sinister than just stirring up past ghosts? Whatever it was, I knew I had to get to the bottom of it before my world came crashing down. The sun shone bright, casting a glow on what should have been the perfect setting for my wedding day. The chairs were lined up neatly on the lush lawn, and flowers cascaded down the aisles. Everything looked right out of a bridal magazine, but the tension in the air could have been cut with a knife. Jack and I stood at the altar, our hands intertwined, trying to beam happiness despite the storm brewing in our hearts. Really, Emma, everything's going to be just fine. Let's focus on us, not the past. I tried to smile at Jack, squeezing his hand a bit tighter as the music started, and our guest turned to watch me walk down the aisle. But just as I took my first step, phones began to buzz one after the other, disrupting the serene moment. Whispers grew into murmurs, and I felt every eye on me, not in admiration, but in judgment. What? What's going on? Jack whispered, confusion lining his brow. I didn't need to check my phone to know. The tension had been brewing ever since Lucy's return. As if on cue, Lucy stood up from her seat, her eyes locked on mine with a fierceness that made my next steps falter. You really thought you could just steal him and live happily ever after? Lucy's voice rang clear across the silent crowd, her phone in her hand, likely the source of the sudden chaos. This isn't the time or the place, Lucy. You need to stop this now, Jack called out, his voice firm, yet I could hear the slight tremor of unease. Stop? 
Oh, I'm just getting started. How can you stand there with her and pretend what we had meant nothing? Tell them, Jack. Tell them how you left me. The guests exchanged looks, some with pity, others with blatant disapproval. I felt a cold sweat break out as I stood there, my wedding dress suddenly feeling like a shroud. Why are you doing this, Lucy? Why now? My voice was barely a whisper, but it carried in the sudden hush that had fallen over the crowd. Because he should be mine. Because you always take everything from me. That's enough, Lucy. This is our wedding day. Jack stepped forward, his demeanor shifting from shock to protective. Whatever we had ended long before I met Emma. You need to accept that. The crowd murmured, some guests pulling out their phones, likely viewing the message that Lucy had spread. The words thief and liar seemed to echo around me, though no one spoke them aloud. See for yourself, everyone. She's not the saint she pretends to be. Lucy sneered, waving her phone around for dramatic effect. Fighting back tears, I turned to face Jack, seeking some semblance of solace. Please, let's just get through this. We can deal with Lucy later. But before Jack could respond, Lucy stormed up to the altar, her anger palpable. You're going to regret this, Emma. If I can't have him, no one should. The threat hung in the air, heavy and ominous. As Lucy finally took her seat, still seething, the efficient awkwardly cleared his throat, trying to salvage what was left of the ceremony. We are gathered here today to celebrate the union of... Despite his efforts, the words felt hollow. The damage was done. The ceremony continued under a cloud of whispers and sidelong glances, and I stood there. My dream day turned into a nightmare, wondering how I would ever recover from this public humiliation. After the wedding disaster, I couldn't face going back to our place, not with everything feeling so tainted. So, I headed to my friend Mia's apartment, a tech whiz who had always been my go-to in times of crisis. As soon as I arrived, the comfort of her cozy living room filled with the hum of multiple monitors and the faint scent of coffee, offered a slight respite from the chaos. Mia, I need your help, I said, the weight of the day's events heavy in my voice. Without hesitation, she swiveled in her chair, her expression serious. What's going on, Emma? It's Lucy, and maybe Jack. I don't know. She ruined the wedding with some scandalous message she sent to everyone. I need to find out where it really came from. I need to know if Jack knew about it. Mia nodded, her fingers already dancing over the keyboard. Let's find out. She pulled up several screens, her eyes scanning lines of data like they were simple street signs. As she worked, I paced back and forth, trying to piece together the events. The possibility that Jack could have been involved twisted my stomach into knots. Okay, I've got something, Mia finally announced. She pointed at a display showing the message's metadata. The message originated from Lucy's phone. No doubt about that. It was sent using her number. But there's more. I leaned in, my heart pounding as I awaited the verdict on Jack's possible betrayal. See here? This part shows that the message was forwarded multiple times before it reached the wedding guests. It looks like it was sent to a group first. Mostly numbers I don't recognize. But Jack's number isn't in the original list. A sigh of relief escaped me, mixed with lingering suspicion. So, he didn't know. It seems so, Mia confirmed, her gaze sympathetic. Lucy was acting alone, at least in sending the message. No direct ties to Jack. The relief was palpable, but the damage Lucy had caused was still a towering wall to climb. Thanks, Mia. I... I need to think about what to do next. Whatever you need, I'm here, she replied, offering a supportive smile. As I sat down, letting the information sink in, the path forward was still murky. Clearing Jack's name in my heart was one thing, but dealing with the fallout from Lucy's actions was another. She had declared war, and I had to decide how far I was willing to go to fight back. With the information from Mia, I felt a mix of relief and fury, relieved that Jack wasn't involved in the scandal, but furious that Lucy had gone so far in her deception. I knew I couldn't just let this slide. Lucy had to be exposed for everyone to see her true colors and I had to clear both my name and Jack's. I devised a plan to confront Lucy in a way that would leave no room for doubt. I chose a popular cafe downtown, known for its bustling crowd and, more importantly, its extensive security system, which included several hidden cameras and mics I could access with Mia's help. 
I convinced Jack and Lucy to meet me there under the guise of mending fences. As I sat at the table, waiting, my heart was pounding. This was it. The moment of truth. Jack arrived first, his face etched with lines of worry, but also hope. I really hope today puts everything to rest, Emma. So do I, Jack. When Lucy arrived, her demeanor was cautious yet smug, as if she still held the winning cards. She sat down, eyeing us both with a sharp gaze. So, what's this about, Emma? Decided to forgive me? Lucy's voice dripped with insincerity. No, Lucy. I brought you here to give you a chance to come clean in front of Jack. Tell him what you told me. About the message. Lucy laughed, a harsh sound that filled the space between us. Oh, Emma. Still playing the victim? What's there to come clean about? I leaned in, my voice steady. The WhatsApp message, Lucy. The one you sent to ruin my wedding. Mia traced it back to your phone. We know it was you. Jack's gaze snapped to Lucy, his confusion evident. Is that true, Lucy? For a moment, Lucy hesitated, her facade cracking. Then, with a resigned sigh, she leaned back in her chair. Yes, I sent it. I thought you still had feelings for me, Jack. I thought I could make you see you were making a mistake. I guess I was wrong. Jack recoiled, his face a mix of shock and disgust. You did all this for what? Some deluded fantasy? How could you, Lucy? I watched the emotions play across Lucy's face. Anger, regret, and then a cold resignation. I don't know. I just didn't want to be left behind again. But I see now I went about it all wrong. The confession, clear and unambiguous, echoed in the air, captured by the cafe's hidden mics. I felt a bitter satisfaction. There was no going back for Lucy now. Everyone would know the truth. As Lucy got up and left, the weight of her betrayal still hung heavy, but I knew this was the first step towards moving on. Jack reached for my hand again, this time with a look of understanding and relief. Emma, I'm so sorry you had to go through all this. Can we start over? Really start fresh this time? I nodded, feeling the first real smile and daze spread across my face. Yes, we can start fresh. We both deserve that. The confrontation had gone as planned. And while the road to recovery would be long, the truth was out. There was hope for us yet, away from the shadows of deceit that Lucy had tried to cast on our future. After the confrontation at the cafe, the revelations about Lucy's deceit quickly spiraled beyond our small circle. The video of her confession, thanks to Mia's tech skills, became public. It wasn't long before Lucy faced the consequences of her actions. Her professional life took a hit. She lost her job once her employer deemed her untrustworthy. Friends distanced themselves, unwilling to associate with someone who had manipulated and lied so publicly. It was a stark downfall, one brought on entirely by her own doing. Jack, though cleared of any direct involvement, found that shadows don't so easily dissipate. Whispers followed him, questioning his judgment and character. It was clear that while he was not to blame for Lucy's actions, the scandal had tarnished his reputation by association. We talked about it, about how maybe a fresh start was what we both needed, but separately. In the weeks that followed, I made a difficult decision. I chose to step away not just from Lucy, but from Jack as well. The love I had for him was real, but the events had strained us to a breaking point. Starting anew meant redefining my life without him, focusing on my own path, my career, and my personal growth. As I moved into a new apartment, filling it with my things, but more importantly, with new hopes and aspirations, I felt a sense of peace. The walls were bare, the rooms echoed with the possibility of what was to come. I started spending more time on my passions, attended workshops, and reconnected with old friends who had stood by me through the storm. Each step felt like a small victory, a reclaiming of the life that had almost been derailed. One evening, as I sat by my new window, a cup of tea in hand, I reflected on everything that had happened. The pain, the betrayal, and the ultimate liberation from a cycle of toxicity that Lucy had tried to perpetuate. It was then I truly understood that my real triumph wasn't just about exposing the lies or seeing Lucy face the repercussions of her actions. My true victory was in choosing myself, in stepping away from relationships that no longer served me, no matter how difficult or painful that decision was. It was about setting boundaries and honoring my own needs and happiness. Life now felt lighter, free from the drama and constant tension that had once defined it. I was building something new, 
something joyful and genuine. And as I looked out into the city lights blinking back at me, I knew this was only the beginning. A smile spread across my face, a smile of someone who had not only survived, but thrived beyond the chaos of her past. This was my story, a tale of overcoming and choosing one's own path. It was a reminder that sometimes, the best way to conquer toxicity is not through dramatic confrontations or seeking justice through others, but by walking away, building anew, and finding peace in the quiet moments of self-discovery. The story of overcoming betrayal and choosing self-growth has come to an end. What would you have done if you were in Emma's shoes? Would you have walked away as she did, or chosen a different path? Share your thoughts below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.